Hey guys, it's Saga and in this video, I'm going to compare the cameras on this iPhone 14 with the ones on the iPhone 13, 12 and 11. If you are confused between which of these phones to get based on their cameras or if you are looking to upgrade from the iPhone 11 or 12 and if you want to know if the on-paper specs really make a huge difference in real life, you have clicked on the right video. If you guys are interested, I also have detailed videos comparing the cameras on the iPhone 11 with 12, 12 with 13 and even the 13 with iPhone 11. Each of those videos have a ton of image and video samples. So if you guys are interested, you should check out those videos after you are done watching this one. We have a lot of image and video samples to go through. So this might be a slightly longer video, but trust me, this is going to be well worth your time. All the cameras on these phones have 12 megapixel sensors. The size of the main image sensor didn't really increase going from the iPhone 11 to 12, but it has got considerably bigger each year since then. To see if the bigger sensors brought any real improvements in the image quality, we will have to compare their images. So let us start by comparing the images which I took with all these phones during the daytime. I will be concentrating more on the images in these challenging diffuse lighting conditions. It is important to look at how these cameras perform in such conditions because we already know that almost all phones do well when the sun is shining nice and bright. At the first look, these images might look somewhat similar. But soon, you start noticing the differences. Even without zooming in, you can tell that images from the iPhone 13 and 14 are sharper and more detailed compared to the ones from the iPhone 11 and 12. Colors look a bit lively on the new iPhones and they have also brought up more details from the darker areas. iPhone 11's image is showing the most noise and the noise level reduces with each new iPhone. This set of images look almost the same from all four phones. Other than the slight change in the way they process colors, these images look almost identical. And unless you zoom in, you can't even tell that iPhone 14 is capturing the most details. Its images are however slightly brighter than the others in these overcast conditions. It tries to sharpen things a bit, so we see a bit more pronounced patterns in its images. You will notice this only when you zoom in and look at these images next to each other. Otherwise, all the images look equally good. iPhone 14 does get a bigger image sensor, which means it is capturing the most amount of details. Adding the newer image processing pipeline on top helps it reduce the noise and makes the color look more natural. All of which is fine and sounds good on paper, but looking at these images from all the phones, could you really tell a difference straight away? Maybe some of you can, but I think for most people, all these images look equally good. Yes, the iPhone 14 is capturing more raw data and performing a lot more computations on it in the background. And if we zoom way in on these images, we do see the difference. But without zooming in, the difference is not very clearly visible. This goes to show how good the cameras on the iPhone 11 still are. It does capture the most noise in these overcast situations, but it is still doing a very good job of keeping up with the new iPhones. So if the images from all these phones look almost the same, unless you zoom way in and pixel peep to find the difference, What's the use of buying the latest iPhone 14 or even the iPhone 13? Why not just get the iPhone 11 and call it a day? After all, one can save a ton of money this way. Actually, you can do that and no one is really stopping you from that. But there are a few things which I noticed while using all these phones together. While the resulting images might not look all that different, the experience of taking these shots was definitely different. If you don't know this, then the iPhone 11 gets an LCD screen while the other three get an OLED display. While the LCD panel on the iPhone 11 is one of the best in the industry, it just doesn't get bright enough when you're outside and it makes composing the shot on a sunny day very difficult. OLED display on the iPhone 12 is slightly better, but it again can't get as bright as the ones on the iPhone 13 and 14 and sometimes it also feels a bit dim when you're outside. Then while taking images, especially close-up, portrait or night mode shots, iPhone 11 and 12 take much longer to set the focus, calculate the depth and decide whether or not they need to use the night mode while the iPhone 14 and 13 feel much faster and smoother. Now don't get me wrong, iPhone 11 and 12 are not slow phones at all, but the iPhone 13 and 14 are much faster, so when using all of them together, 11 and 12 feel a bit slower. Anyways, coming to the colors. There is again a very little difference in the way all these phones capture them. Ones in the iPhone 11 and 12's images are a bit less saturated, while the iPhone 13 and 14 have a bit more saturation and warmth in their images. They all still try to keep the white balance and color temperature as neutral as possible, and if I had to choose one, I would say colors on the iPhone 13 are looking more natural or I should rather say closest to how the scene looked in real life. On the iPhone 11 and 12, you don't get to choose the way they capture colors. But on the iPhone 13 and 14, you get photographic styles which will let you adjust the colors, contrast, tone and even the color temperature of your shots. So you get to dial in any specific look for your images if you go with the iPhone 13 and 14. That being said, I like to keep the photographic styles turned off as I like and prefer the way Apple handles the colors. If you have liked this video so far, then please consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more videos like this. It is free and takes less than 5 seconds of your time. If we look at the dynamic range, it was already good on the iPhone 11 and 12 when they came out. 
Both of them also get the option to turn the Smart HDR on or off in its camera settings, which is great since they let you choose whether you want to use it or not. But this option has been missing since the iPhone 13. And honestly, the dynamic range on iPhones never really got much better since the iPhone 12. You can get much more information out of an image if you shoot in Pro RAW, but that is only available on Pro iPhones. The iPhone 13 and 14 still capture a good dynamic range, but they are starting to fall behind the competition when it comes to challenging HDR situations. Don't get me wrong, both these phones can capture some amazing dynamic range if the conditions are right and if you compose the shot in a proper way. But as soon as you tap to focus, the whole smart HDR4 algorithm is thrown out of the window and brighter parts of the image will be completely blown out. There is still a lot of information in the shadows in these images from the iPhone 13 and 14 if you want to bring them up in editing. I just wish the phone's processing did a better job of bringing those details out. The close-up shots look good from all four phones. As I said before, the iPhone 11 and 12 take slightly longer to set the focus, but the resulting images turn out pretty good. Since the sensor size gets bigger and the aperture gets wider in proportion as you move from the iPhone 11 to iPhone 14, you will also see the background getting slightly more blurred out as you go from iPhone 11 to 14. This sort of images shows the effect of wide aperture and bigger image sensor. iPhone 11's image has the most part of the image in focus compared to all four and the smallest part is blurred out. Whereas as we move towards the images from the iPhone 14, the area in focus is getting smaller and the background area which is out of focus is getting bigger. Normally, we like to have things in focus. But since these are close-up shots, in this case, other than the subject, we hope to get most of the background blurred out. The bigger the image sensor, the smoother the background blur. It was raining when I took this shot, but all the phones did well to freeze the frame and set the focus on these small flowers in the shot. I think this video is starting to look more like how good the cameras on the iPhone 11 still are rather than if the cameras on the iPhone 14 are really as good in real life as they are on paper. Now this is how much of the scene the main camera lets you get in the shot. And this is how much more of the scene the wide lens will let you get in the shot. The ultra wide angle lens makes it look like a whole new scene. This wide lens comes in handy when you want to catch a bigger scene but you don't have enough space to move back like in this shot. Now these are still 12 megapixel images. And even if the image sensor is pretty similar on all the phones, image processing makes all the images look a bit different. Ones from the iPhone 13 and 14 also seem to be sharper throughout. Now we see a bit of distortion and curved lines towards the edges of the white shots from the iPhone 11. But the other three have lens correction turned on, so their images look natural and don't have any curved lines towards the edges. Thanks to the newer image processing pipeline called Photonic Engine, we see slightly better looking white shots on the iPhone 14 even though it has the same white camera as the iPhone 13. Now coming to my favorite kind of images, the portrait shots. I love to take portrait shots with my phone and for the longest time, I believe iPhones have been one of the best at it. Resulting images are looking excellent from all the phones, but the iPhone 11 and 12 took much longer to detect the edges and for most of these shots, iPhone 11 kept on asking me to move closer to the subject. This was not an issue on other phones. The edge detection on the iPhone 11, 12 and even the 13 was not the best when they first came out. But Apple has kept on improving it with software updates over years and now you can see how good they are. None of these phones get LiDAR sensor like the Pro iPhones, so all the depth information is calculated by software. I think the colors and skin tones look better and slightly more accurate in the portraits on the iPhone 13 and 14. Honestly, the results from iPhone 13 and 14 are so close to each other that even after labeling the files correctly, I had to check the exif data multiple times to make sure which image is from which phone. When there is ample light, I feel like the colors and skin tones look better from the iPhone 14 but I could only tell this because I have these images next to each other and I am looking for the differences. I doubt most people will even notice this during their normal day. There are some shots like this one where the iPhone 11 just failed to detect the edges and blur the background. There were few people waiting to take the images at this place so I was rushing a bit and I didn't even notice it unless I was sorting the images for this video. So if you have the iPhone 11 or if you are planning to get it, just make sure you give the portrait mode a few seconds to detect the edges before you click the shutter button. When it is time to take portrait shots of objects, iPhone 14 does the best job of detecting the edges. I don't know many people who take portrait shots of objects like I do, so I won't stress on this part too much. But the next time you are trying to take image of something, just switch over to the portrait mode, have the aperture value set to somewhere between f4 to f6.3 and look how good the shots turn out. Coming to the artificial elite and lower lighting conditions. Finally, we see the bigger image sensor on the iPhone 14's main camera at work here. If I zoom in, you can see that it captured the sharpest looking text and texture on the wall out of all four. There is some noise in all these images, but it seems to be the lowest in the images from the iPhone 14. So the bigger individual pixels and better image processing algorithm are doing their work. We see the same thing in this set of images. iPhone 11 is not able to capture as much light as the other phones 
and there is also the most amount of noise in its images. iPhone 12 and 13 are not doing all that bad and their images are not too far behind the iPhone 14 at least in these lighting conditions. In the shot, iPhone 11 and 12 decided to fire up the night mode while the iPhone 13 and 14 captured it in the normal mode. We again see more details in the low light images from the iPhone 14 but the iPhone 13's images are also not too far behind. In fact, if someone removed the label and asked me to guess which of these images is from which phone, I would probably not be able to tell correctly which is a great news for the iPhone 13. When all the phones fire up the night mode, their images look good. But ones from the iPhone 14 look the sharpest and it also takes these images with the least exposure time. While the iPhone 11 and 12 took 5 seconds exposure for these shots, iPhone 13 took 3 seconds and the iPhone 14 took just 1 second to capture this much information. If you let the 14 capture light for even longer, its images will have much more light and information in them. I never like to use the wide lens when the light gets lower. But we get night mode on the wide lenses of the iPhone 12, 13 and 14, so here are the results. The difference is very subtle, but we have more information and light in the night mode shots from the iPhone 14 compared to the other ones. Since the 13 and 14 are using the exact same wide camera, the difference that we see in these images is due to the new photonic engine on the iPhone 14. That being said, I still won't use the ultra wide camera on any of these phones when there is barely any ambient light around. That brings us to the front facing cameras. For the first time in many years, Apple has updated the front facing camera on the iPhone 14. It is still a 12 megapixel sensor, but it now has a much wider aperture so it lets in more light and it also gets auto focusing capabilities. The front facing cameras on the iPhone 11, 12 and 13 are exactly the same. I have always said in my videos that iPhones don't have the best front facing cameras. This time we do see a slight improvement though. I don't know if you guys can tell it, but iPhone 14 selfie is a bit sharper. As I zoom in, you can also see it has less noise compared to the others which is always appreciated. I am still not a big selfie taker. But if you take a lot of selfies, then look at these images and decide which one looks better to you. Same thing for portrait selfies. Faces are sharper in iPhone 14's portrait selfies, but the edge detection seems to be almost similar from all the phones. Actually other than iPhone 11, all seem to be handling the hair and ears really well in these shots. I think for the selfies, iPhone 14 is showing better colors and natural looking skin tones. So yes, the improvements in the front camera are making the iPhone 14 take better looking images. If you take a lot of selfies, then you might want to consider going with the iPhone 14. All can shoot 4K videos with their front facing camera and here is a video sample from all the cameras. It is so difficult to take videos from 4 cameras at the same time. Here is a video from the front facing camera of the iPhone 11, iPhone 12, iPhone 13 and the iPhone 14. You can see how all these cameras are handling the overall colors of the scene, exposure and stabilization when I am walking around with them. Everyone is looking at me like I am a crazy person and which I am actually looking like one right now. The improvements of the front facing camera are not seen predominantly in videos as 4K videos just use 8.3 megapixels of the 12 megapixel sensor. Video wise I would say all are doing a good job but the colors do seem slightly better from the iPhone 13 and 14. Both the iPhone 13 and 14 can also take cinematic mode videos with its front facing cameras. But it is limited at 1080p 30fps on the 13 while the iPhone 14 can now shoot these videos in 4K which looks amazing if you ask me. For videos, all 4 can shoot 4K 60fps videos with the rear camera and as it has always been, these videos look very smooth and natural. iPhone 13 and 14 use sensor shift stabilization instead of the optical image stabilization on the iPhone 11 and 12. If you see any difference in their level of stabilization, you can let me know in the comments. iPhone 14 also gets a new action mode which when turned on helps it capture super steady videos at 2.8K resolution. Here is how it looks next to the videos from other 3 phones. You can use this mode if you do a lot of run and gun type videos. If you hike a lot or if you take videos while you are on a bike or while running then this action mode can come in very handy. As I mentioned earlier, iPhone 13 and 14 get cinematic mode where you can get the subject in focus and rest of the things can be blurred out. It's like having portrait mode for videos. On the iPhone 13, it is limited at 1080p resolution but the iPhone 14 can shoot these videos in 4K resolution and just look at how good these videos turn out. The cinematic mode algorithm got even better and it now tracks and recognizes faces even quicker than before. I know most people have never used this feature even on their iPhone 13. But just like with the portrait mode images, I love shooting cinematic mode videos too. So for me, that was enough of a reason to push me towards the iPhone 14. Like I promised at the beginning, here are images just from the iPhone 11 and 14 compared side by side. 
we haven't seen much of a difference between the images from the iPhone 12, 13 and 14. So if you are using either the iPhone 12 or 13, I don't think you need to upgrade just for the cameras. But if you are using the iPhone 11 or any phone from before that, you can look at these images and decide. I don't know if you can tell or not, but there is definitely a difference between these images. Ones from the iPhone 14 are noticeably brighter with less noise and more details overall. Colors also look richer and the overall image from the iPhone 14 just looks better in comparison. The difference gets even wider when you look at the low light shots. There is just so much more information in iPhone 14's images. So we have seen over 50 image and video samples from all these cameras and I think it is safe to say that other than in lower light and front facing camera, iPhone 14's images are not too far ahead of the iPhone 12 and 13. It is definitely better than the iPhone 11. So if you are looking to upgrade from your iPhone 11 or any phone from before that, you can go ahead and get the iPhone 14. But if you are using the iPhone 12 or 13, I don't think there is any major reason for you to upgrade. Now because the differences in the iPhone 13 and 14's images were barely noticeable even after zooming in multiple times, I would even say that most people would be better off going with the iPhone 13 as it would also save you a bunch of cash. Don't get me wrong, iPhone 14 definitely has the better set of cameras and if you are a smartphone photography enthusiast or if your phone is your only camera then you can definitely go with the iPhone 14. I just feel that the difference between the images from the iPhone 13 and 14 doesn't justify the difference between the prices. I think you should go and get the iPhone 14 only if you fall in one or more of the following categories. If you shoot most of your images in lower light, if you take a lot of selfies, if you absolutely need the cinematic mode in 4K, let's say for shooting YouTube videos and things like that, or if you plan on shooting a lot of videos in shaky environment where you will need to use action mode. For everyone else, I would say going with the iPhone 13 is probably a smarter choice. After looking at all these image and video samples, what do you guys feel about the cameras on these phones? And if you are considering getting one of them based on their cameras, which one would it be? Let me know in the comments. If you are planning to get any one of these phones, I will really appreciate if you get them from the affiliate links in the description section. That is it for this video guys. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel for a lot more quality tech videos like this. You can also check out some of the other videos from this channel. This has been Saga and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.